Boom. There's that. To another edition of Ask Michael Eline. This is where I teach people the law in an unorthodox manner by using examples that we see in the news, case law briefs, but it's all about exposing the Leviathan and its instrumentalities and taking back your rights. Know the law and mean to keep it well. Come here to learn from an expert to know your right. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to save because we never know when the thought police are going to take down this channel. All right, guys. So I, I've got a really cool show for you today. And I also have a really cool slideshow that BZ Watchdog, former Force Reconnaissance Marine, uh, went ahead and helped me with. And uh, we're seeing just massive arrests uh, since a recent Supreme Court case came down where they denied cert. So a lot of law enforcement and uh, judges have become emboldened uh, to just start arresting people who uh, who say that they support the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and they want to film police. And you'll see uh, with Craig Henry the other day, you know, they're coming out with the tape measure to make sure you're far enough away and all this crazy stuff. By the way, I'm this beard you guys see. That's because my buddy Chili's locked up and, and he's growing a beard. So I'm trying to like show some uh, solidarity. But uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and introduce everybody really quick. Say hi to everybody. We got, we got BZ Watchdog, Force Recon Marine, and we got Texas Gal Audits. Talk to me. Hey, I, how's everyone doing? I think I'm going to grow the beard out too while Chili's locked up. I'm going to shave only when he gets released. That motivates me. That's that You're going to get a lot of chicks though, so you better watch I'll out. Try. But I, I, I kind of have like no shadow on my face. <laughs> so, so guys, I, I got, I just got to share some funny stuff with you. So the last time I met with Chile, I was with Dick Heller, uh, the guy Heller versus district of Columbia or DCV Heller. And uh, we're, we're at this restaurant and every single food server, and they're all like tens on a one to 20, you know, they're just super hot. And like, are you the doing you go like, oh, all the women are just dropping dead over chili. And it's like, Oh, Hey, how are you guys doing? So chili is really famous. It's kind of hilarious. Like in Nevada, I would say probably uh, the vast majority of females know who he is. So that's kind of a cool thing. But anyways, I've got this really cool video that I want to share with you about the mass arrests that have been happening uh, since the Supreme court denied cert on a case where a uh, first amendment auditor was locked up in a police car and hot boxed. And since the Supreme court, hey, by the way, Basil, do you remember the name of the case? Uh, for which one? The one where the Florida guy, the auditor got locked up and, and the Supreme court refused to hear the case. Oh. And man, I forgot what it's called, but if you don't remember, um, it's wait, hold on. Let me look real quick. Cause I'm trying to remember. There's been so many that, no, it's okay. So there was a, a recent Supreme Court case where the U.S. Supreme Court uh, denied cert and they refused uh, to hear uh, the case of an auditor who showed up with his phone. The cop locks him up, throws him in the back of a car, hot boxes him. And since the Supreme Court didn't hear the case, law enforcement has been totally emboldened to start locking up people who are filming cops. And they're chasing them around with tape measures and everything you can think of. And, of course, we know that judges, a lot of them were former prosecutors. So we already know there's a bias there. Uh, well, I can't really prove that they're biased, but I think human uh, uh, psychology would would dictate that. Yeah, there, there are a lot of people on the bench who are pro law enforcement, which makes sense, especially if, if they owe their uh, political rise to power. Uh, to convicting people who might have been even wrongfully accused. And we know that uh, in England, so here's the cool thing that I like about a lot of the old English, not the new people uh, from countries that hate the English that have been imported there, have been imported there by the WEF, but the traditional English families like Basil and I, the Marines, believed in honor and dignity. And so if, if one of your forefathers, even if it was 200 years ago, had been hung or accused of treason, the family would always be fighting to get them uh, sort of acquitted of those charges. And so in England, we have cases of people being hung or capitally punished, killed by the state, being acquitted 200 years later. So I want you to think about that. Like, just because someone is found guilty doesn't mean they're really guilty. 
And just because somebody has been found not guilty doesn't mean that they're not guilty. You still have to do a motion for a finding of factual innocence. But that being said, go ahead and introduce yourself, Texas Gal Audits. Howdy, everyone. I'm Texas Gal Audits. Uh, I am out of the DFW area. I've been doing audits now for about six months. I'm pretty green at it, but definitely love the Constitution and want to have everyone value their freedoms and understand what freedoms that we actually do have and how they can ex exercise those freedoms. Super awesome. Basil, got anything to say? BZ? Yeah, Crocker versus Beatty. I, 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 yeah. I, there we go. Just triggered my head. So, <laughs> but, uh, hey, man, you know, the brain cells are fried when you get up, uh, you know, at oh, dark 30 before oh, dark 30. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, no, Crocker versus Beatty. I just want to say, hey, guys, you know, me, I'm already, I'm like a permanent fixture here. I'm like, uh, you know, stick larkin on live PD, except for I'm not as corrupted and I'm trying to do right. And and, and by the way, just to, to 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 sort of like give you a little bit of uh of a little a little bit of information about me. So <clears throat> my mom is Swedish, German, and Scottish, and my father was 100 percent Swedish. So you see Swedish Observer down here. So Swedish Observer is a victim of the World Economic Forum's mass immigration. In in uh, in Norway and Sweden, if you report the forty to sixty percent increase in rapes by uh, Middle Easterners that they forced into their country, uh, you can be jailed for even talking about it. So I just want you all to know that that's coming to the United States. You've got this guy Larry Fink, piece of garbage from uh, World uh, uh, BlackRock, saying we have to force behavior. So this dude literally wants to flood your country with people that want to like assault your women. So think about that. He's literally saying that we, that we have to do this stuff. We have to force behavior. So before you try to accuse me of defamation or whatever, when you say that you have to force behavior, that tells me that you want to force me to accept things that are morally wrong. Like uh, the Baphomet symbols at target that, that his corporate corporate sponsors want to have is his red shoe club. So um, really quick, what I'm going to do, unless you have anything to say to intro us to your video, Texas Gal Audits, I'm going to play your video uh, and I'm going to wait uh, for you or Basil to stop me. I'll give a little background on the video real quick. Uh, this was a re-audit. I had went to this post office 120 days before the this particular video that we're going to be watching. Uh, the first audit is on my channel. If anyone wants to look at the first audit. Um, What's your channel? Give it to us. And, and I'll also post it in, in the uh, comments. Texas Scout Audits. Um, the actual video is going to be post office full of Karens. And um, I got, I, I had very rude, attentive um, people that worked at the post office. No one understood what I was doing. Um, we, the whole post office ended up being a fiasco the first time I went, uh, because no one could calm them down. They were constantly asking why I was videotaping to stop videotaping. I can't videotape a certain way. So the postmaster did come out. Postmaster told everyone I had the right to videotape. I had every right to be doing what I was doing and try to calm the masses down. I right. left. You know, and I went back for a re-audit. So this is where this video starts. Okay. So everybody, you got the context. Now, I, I, I know that um, a busy watchdog asked Let's OTVO to help us moderate. Um, so between uh, Con Law and Let's OTVO, I'm just asking you guys, like, do like try to be discretionary as far as uh, kicking people out of the chats. I want... Uh, the uh, so-called frauditor patrol to be able to make their comments as long as it's not super disruptive. Like as long as they're not like making up nonsense and trying to like, you know, lie. Uh, and you guys already know what the truth is. Just, you know, look, I'm not the government. So, you know, private people have the right to, to uh, censor people. Uh, so, uh, but I, I would prefer uh, to allow maximum speech because I want both sides of the story to be presented as a lawyer. My job is the pursuit pursuit of truth. So I'm going to go ahead and start the video right now. Here we go. You guys yeah, ready? Post, post the super chats up on the thing. Well, that's up to you guys. Whatever you guys want to do. I'm here to try I, to. I, 
Uncover no, the, the super truth. chats are on the board. Put them on the screen. Aye, aye, sir. Here, here it goes. You guys ready? Here we go. Hey, y'all. Texas gal is here. Hopefully doing a out. revisit at the Duncansville post office. It is raining right now in Texas. Let me know if, if there's so no sound. We're going right to try to hop right in here, here and get into okay. it. We're going to find our poster seven and start recording. I'm just looking for hands. Put the super chats up in the screen. How do I do that? So Click on them. Rules and regulations. Hold on. Let me see where they are. Oh, my gosh. There's a bunch of them. Okay. Let me stop it. Hold on. Let me stop the video. Here's okay. the deal. Put up $10. Put that one up first. Here's the what the heck? Here's the deal. What the heck? Here's the deal, dude. I'm so glad you showed up, man. I thought you hated me. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about it. Don't let's talk in. about it. Don't forget to like this video and support the people like Ask Michael Eline. Well, I appreciate that. But honestly, guys, support Chili, man. Support Texas Gal Audits. You can support me if you get in a car accident someday and you call me. But I'm not here to try to make money. I'm here to support the Constitution because I want my wife and my kids in particular to see that their father was a freedom fighter. So um, so there's that one. By the way, make sure to add Here's the Deal to your, to your channel. Absolutely. All right. All right. So let me go to the next one. Chevy. Chevy. Well, I like Chevys, but I got to tell you, man, Chevys are cool way. Pero me gusta Ford's way. Orale, carnales. I got two old school Chevys. I love my Chevys. Sorry. I love Chevys too. My dad was a big proponent of the, the 327 Chevy. And uh, he had a uh, 68 vet that he paid cash for from having a newspaper route. So it just makes me laugh when I hear all these people telling me about how the government and and white people won't give him a job. And it's like, dude, my dad went like, just like I did as a kid, went door to door and asked people for work. You know, you don't see that happening anymore. So think about that, guys. If you're an entrepreneur, you're going to make it happen. Come hell or high water, a real man's going to make it happen because he wants to have a family and he wants to have a cool chick like Texas Gal Audits. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to keep playing this video. You guys ready? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's do it. And we got the recording procedures. You just tell me when to stop. Stop. I'm stopping right now. All right. Talk to me. Put up the super chat. That's a big one. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, holy crap. Another one from Here's the Deal. Christopher, yeah. here's the deal. You are too kind, brother. Like, I feel like obligated now to send you all this, uh, whatever I get out of this, because uh, I didn't do this because I wanted super chats. But okay. So it's he wanted to come up from Christopher because he wanted him to send more. So Christopher, here's your shout out, brother. Appreciate you. Hey, Christopher, if you ever need any uh, legal advice, or whatever, just give me a call. I got you covered, man. You got a problem with your wife, family, kids, government, whatever. I'll be there for you, man. One thousand percent. And I got a bunch of Marines in uh, Texas with the Leathernecks Motorcycle Club. Uh, we'll be there with uh Whoa, whoa, Harley's victories and the Indians ready to go for you. Man. Oh, just got another one. I think oh, they're hell competing yeah, here. I think they're competing. Hey, where's Ford way? We all know that the Mexican dudes like Chibbies, but you know, Fords are cool too. I got a Ford right now. I'm driving around in a in a Ford Tremor. Let me see. Here. It's all right. My my significant other works for Ford. So I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like Ford. And Henry Ford wrote a, a lot of really interesting books that I recommend you guys read when you get a chance. But I don't want to get too political. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this video. Is that cool? Please. Yeah, right. I'm going to do this the next time there's a super chat. All right, sir. Oh, I got our two ladies over here last time. Final like. I'm just standing by for any any comments that you guys want to make. Actually, I do. Okay, stand by. Go for it. I do want to say that these are the same exact two postal workers from my very first audit. 
So these are the same two ladies from the first audit. All That's right. It. It, all right. And let's give this some context. So everybody, I want you to know something. A lot of people, because I wasn't always a lawyer, so I'm not presumptuous like most lawyers that you'll meet. I know that most people don't understand that we have a federal and a state government. And they're both different. So the post office is a federal quasi federal agency. We know that they donate about 90% of their money to the Democrat party and that they have a, a union that donates almost a hundred percent of their union dues to the Democrat party. Now, by the way, I think they also count your uh, mail-in ballots. So I'm sure that they'll make sure the Republicans uh, get a fair share of the votes. But besides that, I wanted you to understand the difference because Law enforcement, local law enforcement is a general proposition or rule does not have authority to even show up at a federal agency and enforce the law. So unless the local agency has a contract or some kind of an agreement signed with the federal government, local law enforcement has no jurisdiction to even show up at a post office. So, OK, go ahead, Basil. Talk to me. Just to let you know, the only people that can authorize that contract is the local postmaster, the installation head, or the uh, the postmaster general. That's it. Right. Okay. And what do we know about this post office, uh, Texas gal? Talk to me. Um, they it's don't like a, auditors. At uh, fifteen uh, <laughs> forty minutes <laughs> south of Dallas, um, the demographic is a mixed uh, demographic uh, ethnically. It's uh, made up of about uh, 40% blacks, 30% whites, and then, or maybe 25% whites, and then, you know, uh, other ethnicities within the other 15%. Uh, wow. Wow. It, that's, that's pretty extreme. Like in California, it's about 90% black and about 5% Hispanic and about 5% white based on my personal observations. So that's pretty interesting. Go so ahead. Keep talking. Very diverse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is within Dallas County, apparently. Um, the The actual post office of Duncanville was named, uh, the city was actually named after a postmaster in 1892 because there was another Duncan, Texas. And so they just added a ville to it in order for it to have its own post office. So the postmaster oh. actually named Duncanville, Texas. Interesting. Okay. Thanks for the context. So that's one thing that I like to do. And a lot of people don't do this. And I'm hoping that you auditors and other people with your own channels laying a foundation, because I like to teach people how to become a lawyer without law school, because I think that thinking like a lawyer will really help you guys in your normal lives. Right. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Like think like, so always lay a foundation. Like I, I'm trying to help you guys understand the context as opposed to just talking out my butt. And you're all like confused. Oh, this guy's a conspiracy theorist. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I like to like lay it, lay the foundation so you know what's going on. So just let me know, Texas gal, because we're here for you. Uh, do you want me to start playing your show again? Or so I say okay. we play for about five minutes, kind of show like what actually happened because no one spoke to me the whole time I was at the post office. And I want everyone to be aware of that. Like not one post office employee said one word to me. Okay, so everybody be patient, and I'll try to respond to your chats in the sidebar. I'm going to run this for five minutes, so I'm not going to see BZ or her on the screen with telling me to stop because I want to do a full screen. But I'm going to re be responding, and I'm hoping Let's OTVO can also help me because I'm counting on him because last time we had so many garbage comments that I got complaints from the family. So I want to make sure that we don't have a bunch of garbage comments. Uh, so let's go. Here we go. You guys ready? Oh. Er Oh, here we go. Customer scoot away for her, but we still got it on film. Unless you want me to stop, just, I can hear you, so just tell me. 
Hopefully I can hear you. I know she still keeps trying to promote craziness in the post office. You can stop right here. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Copy that. All right. Hold on. Let me get you, let me get you over here. All right. Talk to me. Right there. If you don't notice, the post lady like notices wait, me. Wait, wait. Did you assume it's gender? I did. Oh my God, that's a capital offense. To be able to assume anything I want to. So I <laughs> no, no, that's illegal. I, I heard it from the World Economic Forum. You can't assume I'm someone's sure gender. It is, but hey, I'm going to speak my legalities on this. If I think All it's right. talks and walks like a duck, it must be a duck kind of situation. <laughs> All right, talk to us. I'm going to I'm going to give you the full the full screen. So basically, um, if you notice, the two customers are at the desk. I'm talking to the camera. I'm not talking or interfacing with anyone, particularly at the post office. I'm talking to the people who watch my forum. And um, the people notice me. And she's like, oh, no, she has the right to film. Just leave her alone. Ignore her. So she states on camera, I have the right to be there. Okay, well. Clearly, she kind of knows what's going on. Do you want me to keep playing the video? Yep. or Okay. Yeah, she was just giving you context why this lady was blowing a gasket. Mm -hmm. Thanks, BZ. I appreciate that. All right. give me. right. I'll do 50 push-ups since I didn't know. Uh, I'll let you off the 10. <laughs> Five. <laughs> oh, you learned your lesson from last time? You got educated? I love her haircut, by the way. Those jerry curls are amazing. Yeah. Really pretty girl. That so glow. She's actually pretty cool. I, I, I've i seen this before. I like her. She's squared away. why we do what we do. By the way, the comments are uh, Texas gal talking. Understood. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I can see you guys, by the way, if you want to put your hands up whenever you want me to stop. All right. Looks like a lot of happy people at the post office. Yeah, I think I just saw Rachel Levine, uh, our uh, attorney, our Surgeon General on uh, mental health, just leave. There she is with her, uh, with her pulley on. Amazing. <laughs> Jokes are free all day, guys. <laughs> She's always available to babysit your son if you ever need a babysitter. Okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, she got him. She's the superstar, remember? The stupid star. <laughs> She's a superstar. You're terrible. Stupid okay, I'm gonna star. stop. Okay, hold on. Stand by. I see. I see a hand. I see a hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm stopping. I saw. I, I saw. I saw someone's hand. So, so yeah. dictate. Di tell so me what's going on, guys. The superstar comment comes from the very first <laughs> when I'm videotaping before <laughs> Isis. I'm videotaping. She's interfacing with this guest and she's like, I'm the superstar. I'm the superstar. I'm this, that, and the other. I then when she realizes I'm videotaping. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys like my shirt? So that's why I refer to her as the superstar once again in the revisit. Yeah, but in the revisit, after you say the superstar, you actually say the stupid star the at star. one point. <laughs> she's just the stupid star. <laughs> Just let me know when you want me to keep playing. I'll go. All right. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. I'm 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 paying attention here to see what's going on. So here it goes. I'm looking for hands. They're just working for now. Well, you mean the government go government employees so don't work. They employ. <laughs> so, don't get, don't confuse the facts. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I was, apparently, she <laughs> learned. I can point my camera whichever. They get way guaranteed along. pensions as long as they make sure people like us get locked up. Good 
So I got a really quick question, guys. Like, what's the deal with the obesity with with uh, with women? Because like when I grew up, I don't know. I'm tiny yeah. as heck, so don't ask me. All right, all right. I'm gonna keep playing. All right, here we go. It's all the barbecue in Texas. We do. Um, <laughs> it, it really hurts uh, the tax base because with Obamacare, you know, like diabetes and all this, like big pharma is cleaning up on this. It's just so crazy. To be an American, keep talking though. Like, to just give me a hand so I know when to stop. Appreciate our constitution. Well, I everyone to this see that no one speaks to me the whole time I'm in there. Okay, so the context is she's just filming, minding her own business, doing her audit thing, uh, basically auditing the First Amendment at a federal installation. Remember, this is a federal installation. It's not California or Texas state. It's federal. And unless there's an agreement with local LEO through the postmaster general to enforce the law, local LEO has zero jurisdiction over this facility. My expectation right. here. Oh, she fine. <laughs> <laughs> Smile I mean, for the camera. They're matching. Isn't that cute? That's cute. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> I love Texas, by the way, guys. If, if, if I could move that. to Texas, I'd be there tomorrow, but I just can't do it just yet. Rick Jones, he said it the best. If you're going to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. Hey. It's too bad we didn't keep all the illegals there because uh, we'd pick up, you know, like 50 or 60 seats and, uh, you know, as a, they would be red. So at least we might have a chance. Right. But with blue, we have zero chance. So there you go. I said might, by the way, all you naysayers like Craig Hendry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know where you're coming from, brother. I get it. I do. I really do. Just tell me when. Oh, I love this place. I love being out here on the farm. I love my cows. I love my dogs, and I love my space. Hey, we love you. And by the way, I'm gonna have my buddy uh, Brett Pike, who is a homesteader, come on, hopefully soon, and we're gonna talk about. Here comes the. the uh... Here comes the phone okay. call to the popo. I'm right, gonna stop it. I'm gonna stop it. Yeah. Talk to me. Talk to me. I've stopped uh, it for a minute. The girl was helping, uh, if you notice, the girl with the short hair, she was helping uh, customers. She was giving the other uh, employee change and interchanging. That I'm one, the, the, the jerry curl? That one? Uh, yeah, one soul glow. Dark, dark skin and the dark hair. Or soul glow. I, mean, I don't know what that means, but okay. Girl, Coming so. to America, buddy. Coming to America. Watch oh, the movie. Okay, okay. And um, she has. And she has like the just the short hair that comes off to the side to her cheeks here. Yes, she yes, keeps registering now. She's going back towards where the postmaster general's office is. Oh, no, the postmaster, not the postmaster general. Uh, I mean, yeah, the postmaster. I'm sorry, just the postmaster. I, I don't copy know. that. Yeah. Okay. So let me give you hold on really quick, guys, before we get into this. So the postmaster general is typically like, you know, how uh, uh, O'Biden appointed uh, Rachel Levine, a former man who became a woman. He likes to wear dresses and play dress up uh, to be like his uh, attorney general or a surgeon general on mental health or whatever. So the same thing, the, the, uh, the uh, postmaster general is the one overseeing all of the post offices. And then the postmaster at your actual office is the one who decides whether or not things are lawful or whether or not they want to make a deal with the local law enforcement and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Texas gal, like, you know, if no, I'm wrong, forget about the installation head. But wait, so tell me, talk, so talk basically, me. um, the installation head is the one that goes mostly through the government. The postmaster okay. general is, is the, is above the installation head. Okay, so the installation head is the one that would contact like Texas Municipal Police or or the Texas Rangers yeah. if they wanted to have them come and well right. Well actually so actually the postmaster sees the post office branch, like the one office, okay? Okay. The installation head is above the postmaster and oversees like two or three oh, post office, kind of like a regional or a district manager. Okay, okay. And then you have the postmaster general who runs the whole thing. Right, but like Rachel Levine, three, if you were a, a young people, boy, okay. those three people are the only ones that can make a contract with local authorities 
to regulate it. But it says that I, I reached out to the Postal Inspection Service, which is the law enforcement for all post offices. They are the only ones without that, regardless of a contract or not, that can investigate all crimes on postal government property because it's federal. Copy that. So the only time the local authorities could be called out is like if someone's being violent on a 911 call or disorderly. But for someone who's trespassing or, or, I mean, you shouldn't be trespassed off public property unless you've been disorderly. So I Yeah, mean, well, it makes sense. And, and that's why a lot of people are, are confused about the IRS. Like, how can the IRS trespass people? Well, it's because they're a private agency. Oh, did I say something wrong? I might get banned for that. Anyways, go ahead, guys. Talk to me, <laughs> Texas guy. Um, <laughs> So basically, the the just the postmaster was there. So I had misspoke, but yes, just the postmaster was there. And that's it. Okay. And just let me know, man, when you're ready for me to keep playing. We're ready. She's walking right. back to the back to go talk to the postmaster. She's going <laughs> back there to snitch. Okay, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna get the first class snitch right here on tape. Here we go. Snitches get. I mean, snitches get snitches. Yeah, she don't want to act cool <laughs> on camera no more. <laughs> There they them goes. Well, you can't. You, you don't want to assume anyone's gender now because two years ago that all changed. So now we're slowing down the line because she wants to go snitch. Got it. All right. So she left. So there's less personnel to help out. All right. So they them comes back. With like a whole handful of stuff. Right. Go back to the back. Take take out. See right here, I assume she was taking her lunch. This one here? No, the one that had all those items. Oh, in her okay. So you thought you you Switch. thought hold on hold on. So you thought that the uh, the Jerry curl her. one um was going to get their lunch, right? Yes, I thought she left her thing and went to the back and got some stuff, and then she had stuff in her hand. So I assumed this whole time while I was filming, yeah, uh, she had relieved herself to go to lunch. Wait, so, so, okay, okay, so hold on, hold like, on. I'm clueless, like, I'm clueless <coughs> about to transpire. Let, let's so just barely, ba like, really clueless about what's about to transpire. But sorry, my dog freaked himself out. But, um, all right. So I assume when I see all these items in her hand that she's actually taking off to go to lunch. Oh, by the way, I need to answer something. Kenny Bridgman, by the way, NorCal is out of jail, buddy. So you can say yeah. where NorCal you want, but he's out of jail. <laughs> so, yeah, I assume she was going to lunch. And so. Okay. 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 So, so everybody uh, really quick. Uh, Nor okay. Hold on really quick. So everybody, NorCal audits, one of our brothers, uh, he got arrested. He's pretty gung ho, and uh, you know. So, by the way, I'll put in the uh, in the description, you know, uh, a link to donate to his GoFundMe. Um, I'm not I'm not being sponsored or being told to do this. I just believe in justice. So, I don't even know the facts of the case, but I know that when a cop gets out of his car with a tape measure and tries to measure how far I am away while I'm trying to engage in a first amendment activity i got oh, a no, problem he got arrested again <laughs> yesterday buddy for something else i'll tell you about it later problems. Right. that's what you're doing yeah you're just trying to hold uh, government officials accountable and they don't like that uh, that's normal and when they uh erase their body cam footage or try to edit it and we can't do anything about it and the courts just go along with it clearly that's a problem and that's why i'm here because i don't like it i think it's a real freaking problem so let's uh really quick are you ready uh texas yeah, gal ready. for me to Go back on it. Yes, ma'am. Here I go. Stand by. All right. So if you guys remember, this is what I was doing last time. This stupid star. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to tell me when to stop. It's it's basically the context is is that you're just standing there you're not engaged you're not doing anything wrong you're just filming you're not you're not screaming or yelling or making a scene right no one can really hear what i'm saying if you can notice on the video it's so silent you can barely hear what i'm saying on the video you know what i mean like you can barely yeah. out 
you know, so people couldn't hear me. It would be like speaking in a library. So we appreciate yep. everyone. The voice, Hit that sound. Like, subscribe right and share this video. Yeah. Let so uh, let's OTVO just said it's the camera, stupid. <laughs> because it is. They just don't like the camera. I mean, honestly, put it in the comments. Give me a bunch of ones. If you think you showed up here with a hidden cam and just stood there, then anybody would give an F. It's just they see oh, no. you you're holding your phone, no, they'd call right? The oh they'd, call, they'd call the cops on Texas gal for loitering. They'd find something on her. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, if like a guy like me shows up, you know, with like a suit on, and I've got like a little hidden oh, peep cam. You know, like the ones the FBI lost with Come thousands of hours of footage at Epstein yeah. Island of, of all of their political campaign donors and the ones who helped keep their agency alive, all banging little kids, the ones that they lost, that one, yeah. Stitch is back. So we need to kind of... All right, stopping it right now. Stand by. All right, go for it. So if you notice, she comes back from the back and she doesn't have anything in her hands. I didn't notice this as I'm filming, but yeah. she stands there next to the girl the whole time. She doesn't go back to her register. And then the, the whole other episode goes on. The next well, Mike, Mike, real quick, just to For let sure. everybody know, after this arrest, her and I actually went and did an audit together. Okay. And, they, and believe it or not, she was in the corner very quietly, minding her business with just a camera, not even saying words like this one. And she not only had one person attack her, she had two people confronting her. Okay. And at this point, she's trying to flag me down for help. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 friend. <laughs> yeah. So it's Let just her. It doesn't matter if she goes in there with a hidden camera or with a, a thing to mail something off. Right. They'll still call the cops on her. They just don't like well, her. Well, yeah, they, they know who, who she is. But, like, wow. I'm just saying, like, like if I would have shown up and had, like, a hidden cam, I could have even had a drone flying around in that place. They wouldn't have even known, known who I was. And I probably would have gotten more footage. All right. So you ready, you ready uh, Texas gal? Okay. Stand by. Here we go. There ain't nothing free here because you guys are in debt. <laughs> Six point five billion dollars they lost last year. <laughs> ain't nothing free here, bitch. Okay. The only and reason, and, yeah, they, and they say it's a business. If that's the case, they would have been bankrupt and out of business twenty years ago. Yeah, the only reason we have a post office, I think all of us know, is because they can help with the election. With they can help with the elections. That's that's ridiculous. Well, I, I mean, would any like, hold on a minute? I just want to say something really quick. <laughs> I, I just got to say this: if, if the Republicans had like ninety percent control of the U.S. Post Office, do you think the Democrats would trust them uh, with mail-in ballots? I, I doubt it. I mean, we've seen the video footage of you know postal trucks showing up at midnight or whatever with ballots, and then all of a sudden the, the votes going up to like four hundred percent more. And then, of course, all the judges that were appointed by the same political party saying nothing to see here. Uh, there's no evidence of voter fraud. Well, of course, there's no voter ID. So how would you ever find evidence of voter fraud? I just want people to understand, like, as a lawyer, when I hear things like that, it's like, are you kidding me? How would I have evidence if you if you made it impossible for me to know if there's evidence by denying me the right to know who the hell voted and if they had an ID to prove that they're even a citizen? So anyways, I'll go ahead and keep playing. Here we go. Voting machines are a scam, in my opinion, by the way. Stupid star. Yeah, total scam. She's a total stupid star. Hey, how's it going? You know what I'm saying? Are, <laughs> are you a federal? Or like the snitch star. Okay. Snitch. Do you have a contract with Yeah, can you believe she snitched? It's amazing how the table this guy, started, right? This, she got power. Right? I'm just this, here to make a purchase. This guy here is two um, donuts away from the heart attack. Because I have the right to the first Oh, my God. Press. Dude. That's it. Clearly, he was recon. Goes up out of nowhere. What's your name, Bachelor? Okay, but right here is not your name. What's up, homie? Hold on. I'm going to so stop So what is it. your name? Go for it, Texas gal. So the funny thing is the whole time I'm doing this audit, before he shows up, I was going to give them an A plus because no one spoke to me. No one said anything about my camera. The cops didn't get called. They, let, they were going to let me do the transaction. I only had one person in line in front of me before I got to go in to make my transaction. They were going to get an A plus. Seriously, at at this point, until before he walks up on me, they were getting an A plus. Copy that. So everybody, just so you know, 
So Texas gal is just giving you the narrative of what's going on uh, with that, with a case where uh, this uh, Rotan guy showed up with his circus tent. Uh, it looks like body armor, but like I could sleep under that thing. Uh, and uh, so my tents. what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to keep playing. Is that cool? Yes. All right. Okay. Do you want to give her business? Okay. Uh, they don't have the option. This is a no, no, this is not a Walmart. <laughs> For what reason? <laughs> well, but it has to be. No, it does. It does. So, do are you trying to stop? We can do this real easy, right? Or we can make this real hard on yourself. <laughs> don't make me take away your qualified immunity. Okay, okay no, I said, don't make me, machine. don't make me Just tell take me when away to stop. Texas. Immunity. Oh, Sir, okay, don't on, grab me, it. don't touch me. You don't now, have for right. some reason. I'm not hearing her comms. Talk to me, Texas gal. I want to make sure I can hear you. All so, right. basically, he comes in and, and like, <laughs> I have no clue that this guy's going to come up off behind me. He was like, ma'am, can I help you? And it's an officer. And I turn back, but I keep the camera, like, facing the employees just because I didn't know who was speaking to me first. And it's a freaking cop. Well, your I, first, oh. Wait, hold on. Your first mistake is, how dare you assume my gender? Because then you can sue him for something. Anyways, well, I, keep, keep talking. Maybe not in Texas. <laughs> Maybe in California, but I don't well, know. Well, if it's Austin, or you probably could, or Dallas. I don't think, in, well, this, yeah, Duncanville. <laughs> but, so, anyways, um, and then he's like, he asked me what I'm doing, and I'm like, I'm in line to purchase a stamp, so I, I'm already in line. He can see I'm there to make a business transaction. He says, are you filming? I said, yes, sir, I'm filming, <laughs> because we have the film of press. You know? <laughs> and then I'm like, well, since you're going to ask me questions, well, do you have the right to be in here with your firearm? Do you have the, do you have a contract with the postal office? I asked him those two questions. He got frustrated and, and solicited a trespass because I, I asked him questions. This well, ain't a Walmart, by the way. Yeah, it wasn't a fucking Walmart. All right. So I'm going to keep playing. You guys ready? Let me Roll, know. Baby I, Huey. We got like four minutes, man. Let's make this happen. They don't have the right to tell me. That is ready to have a stroke in a second. Get your supervisor. He's one T-bone steak short of a graveyard. Well, there's someone on the clock. Was that another cop showing up, like limping? I'm getting trespassed. I hope that's not a cop that just walked in. So everybody called the Duncanville Reminds police. Reminds me of a typical army guy, you know. Let them know I'm being trespassed. 800 pounds. For no reason. Okay. General. A bunch he of ribbons. He you know, doesn't typing understand ribbon. how trespass works in public buildings. Right, here we go. So everybody called the Duncanville police station in Texas. You just uh, rearrange that for yourself. I'm not gonna attack nobody. Can I get you to stick it? No, sir. No, ma'am. I, I am in my free <laughs> space. Is that his backup? I will talk to you right here. This is where I will talk to you. I'll stand out of their line, but I'll talk to you right here. Stand your ground. I'm not. Wait, she, uh, wait you're backing up. Hold on, hold on. So I just want to give some context. So you're backing up. Well, because like typically, uh, as far as poster seven, if you are um, hindering business by any way, that yeah. is considered a way to be able to be trespassed. And I'll with me that. being inside of the line and her yeah. asking me to get out of the line because he had stopped me from making my transaction, it would have been a plausible trespass. So I move um, out of the line so that way he couldn't have a plausible trespass. So so I want to give context to our audience. So there's a, a real misconception, especially with First Man auditors and sovereign citizens, that you can't be trespassed from a public building. It's, it's a public area, so you can't be trespassed. So one of the things that I learned a long time ago, uh, a long time ago about being a lawyer is that sometimes I learn more from my clients than I learned uh, from reading a law book. And uh, 
you know, obviously I'll, we'll verify this, but I want to know what is your opinion? Can you be trespassed from a public building? Go ahead, Basil, or either one of you talk to me. Yeah, you, you can be trespassed from a public building, but you would have to commit a crime to be trespassed from a building unless you're outside of the time, place and manner of those business hours. Okay. So I'll do some additional research on that to verify it, but I'm pretty sure Basil's right. I just don't want to make a hard and fast uh, statement on that because I just got barred into Texas. Or if I go past the no trespassing signs that are on the fence line outside with that nice big federal badge sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, like like, like a, there's a parking lot, right? Or something like that. Go ahead. Go ahead, now, Texas. Go. See here is the postmaster who gave me permission to film the very first time I was at the post office when there was a huge disruption within the community of just, you know, uh, citizens being in there, not understanding quite what I was doing. She made them understand. She did let them know I had the right. Now this is her the second time. Copy that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and keep playing the video and you guys just tell me when to stop. All right. Yeah, I remember her. Hey, Manning, are you good? So anyways, he's going to sit here and act like he's going to play on his walkie-talkie. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Go, go on private if you want to have a private conversation. He he doesn't look too happy. He was unhappy. Then, then go handle those. No, I didn't ask you, know, you to stop here. I got to tell you something. <clears throat> you know, it amazes me. It amazes me when I see people who claim that they're the oppressed victims and stuff like that, uh, using the same exact thing against people. Uh, that they claim was used against them. Like to me, if, if you really want justice and liberty and freedom, everybody has to be treated equal and you can't play this, uh, this revenge game where you use the same system that destroyed your people against the other people. That's, that's well, not the way. Isn't that it. why the 14th amendment was created, Mike? Well, I think it probably was created uh, in order to enable uh, the 16th amendment to happen, but uh, well, that's another conversation for another day. I agree. But <laughs> yeah, but let's uh, but let's go ahead and uh, finish the video up. All right, you guys ready? Hold on. So if you look right here, he says he has other things to do in the city right. besides mess with me. That's what he says right here. Yeah. Before he paused it, he's but, about to turn green. Look at his face. <laughs> he's so mad at me, he's so <laughs> bro. I can in so quick. Just tell me when you want me to keep go playing. ahead, please, please. All right, stand by. Okay, then handle yeah. that. If you need to stay here, then stay here. If you don't, then go. <laughs> go handle the things you need to go handle. I'm, I'm giving directives here. Then don't ask me what to handle or not handle. Hey, could you imagine this guy in like USMC boot camp? Oh, my God. <laughs> Receiving barracks. <laughs> hey, hey, this is where it's happening. So tell me what. Hey, really quick. Hey, Basil. Basil, yeah. they'd, make the they'd, they'd make his rec recruiter do bends and thrusts. Yeah, no shit. All right. Okay. All right. I need to listen to this. Have to trespass me from a public <laughs> building. They don't want you here. That is not a legal reason. I am press. I am press. I am in a government building doing the news. Do you have ID? So, where do you get ID for press? Everyone is press. The freedom of press. They don't want you Sir, here. Sir, you're this not going to trespass me unless you okay. want your we'll go to jail. You want your qualified way. immunity taken? That's not he never even asked her to leave, Mike. Upgrade your windows and doors with yeah, Renewal by that. Anderson okay, in four second. easy so steps. Like do this, Step one, uh, free consultation. Pass, you have to have reasonable amount of time to be able to leave. Well, first off, he needed to say, I will arrest you for trespass if you don't leave. Wait, is that you or is this another video? It's a different video. You're right, right, right. I'll be following you in the background. Hold on, guys. We're not, we're not covering this tattooed pigtail yet. <laughs> so um no that's fine um not you how, not um, he never said i will be arrested for trespass if i don't leave if he would have said those words i would have at least walked out the door and tried to have another conversation with with you know with him with you know with not within the doors of that building yeah. 
I was never told that. All he said is, ma'am, come outside and come talk to me. No, sir. No. Then he grabs me and I'm like, don't touch me. Yeah. You know? So he definitely was abusing his uh, power and trying to definitely put his authority to intimidate me. And then when that didn't work and I kept like putting him in his place, he got embarrassed. And as soon as the other officer goes in there, she goes, he tells him she refuses to leave. And I'm like, no, sir, I don't like you can't trespass me unless I committed a crime. He's like, all right, she's under arrest. Okay, so there really quick. Been, there was three times in this video he was very impatient. He was impatient once I started asking him questions. He solicited a trespass. And then when he got on his walkie-talkie and I started to ignore him and, and hanging on his walkie-talkie and I, I started filming other shit. And then the third time when he, you know, tries to, like, tell me why he's going to trespass me, he just can't have the conversation and just arrest okay. me. Okay, Texas gal. So here's the deal. So... Here's the deal, right? Here's the deal. Hey, I love that. By, by the way, I love that. Here's the deal. Hold on really quick because 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 most of this audience probably doesn't even know what soliciting a trespass is. And okay. I always want to lay a foundation. Can you tell them in your own words what you think soliciting a trespass is so they so they understand? So Please. if the person who called and is not the complainant of a crime or a situation, however you want to state that calls and says hey we want this person trespass for whatever xyz reasons um he never he came right up to me he didn't go up to the caller of the call to make sure that he understood what the situation was he approached me right away and then when i asked him two questions he says do you want her here he doesn't have the authority to ask other people of their business if they want me there or not. It's up to the people of the business to ask me or ask him to ask, you know, to say, I need to leave. They need to establish that, not him. Well, we probably need to hear what's on that 911 call, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. So hold on really quick. So, as far as the 911 call goes, typically, my experience is only the attorney for the defendant can get a copy of that while there's still a quote active investigation. So they make it really, really hard for you to get any of that information. Uh, even and I, for the, go I've ahead. Been call. I've been denied my 911 call and that's yeah. possibly, you know, because I personally did it. Not, yeah. an attorney. you know what I'm saying? I yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll talk about like, I don't want to get into any of the, like legalities of your case. Right. We can talk about that confidentially, but absolutely. Yeah. If you want to, you know, by the way, everybody, I don't represent her. Um, I am just a, uh, a journalist <clears throat> and I'm trying to expose some things and get some information out to people. So you'll understand what's going on uh, with the first amendment auditor community. Uh, my personal feeling is, is that large corporations don't like people like her uh, because it interferes with uh, municipalities being able to raise money and whenever municipalities raise money, the police unions and the other unions involved, like SEIU, donate a bunch of money to the politicians that we don't like, clearly, the same politicians that are flooding our country with the illegal aliens, because we, we love our country and, and uh, we want to make the country a better place. And we don't want peasants from other countries who know nothing about our Constitution uh, not uh, being forced to take a test to prove that they'll do something to benefit our country <clears throat> other than just change the census data so their party can have perpetual control and take away our second and first amendment rights. So that being said, that being said, am I wrong? T talk to me, Texas gal. Uh, no, absolutely. Uh, being uh, born and raised on a border town of Arizona, this problem has been going on for 20 or 30 years, you know, since I was a young girl. And um, and when I moved to the DFW area, a lot of people didn't really understand what really transpires on the border and like how much uh, this really does impact our community when we have a lot of people coming into this country illegally, not doing, you know, um, whatever it takes like it used to sometimes it would take them five six years to to become 
legal, but they had to go through all their due processes. And it's like that in every other country, but ours now. Yeah, we're the only country that lets <clears throat> illegal alien criminals come. And we know that at least 40 to 50 percent of California's electors uh, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for illegal immigration. We know that California at one time was a red state and we know that uh, the other party likes to flood red states with illegal aliens because yep. they know if, if they put them into blue districts, they can they can quadruple the representation in that district with the census. And that's what's really going on. I've been telling people this for the last 10 years. It looks like Elon Musk finally picked up on it and started talking about it last year. But I've been saying this for 10, 10 years or longer. That that's that's the end game. You've got uh, the, the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, the World Economic Forum, all these Luciferian organizations, uh, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers who have destroyed our education system to brainwash children. Uh, they're the ones behind this, in my opinion. Uh, right. But I don't want to get too deep into it, but oh, hold on. Let me get you guys all on the screen. There we go. Hold on. Can I get you all? Okay, cool. Because I'm an equal opportunity. I want all of us to have the same size screen, you know, so we can all feel equal. Hey, real quick, Mike. The yes, comment sir. that I got up because somebody said something about as soon as Chili's released, he can be shipped off to Ohio. I don't believe Nevada would do that and get rid of all his money without actually resolving all his cases since they're because they're not going to want to pay to have him brought back before a judge in any kind of jail time if he if he's found guilty in any way. Yeah, well, there was a really cool movie, uh, Clint Eastwood movie uh, years ago. I think it was Dugan or something. He plays an Arizona cop. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys remember this, but he I think he goes to California to to get a to get this criminal out of jail and had to do extradition. So what would happen is like Ironton, uh, the Soviet Socialist Republic of Nepotism, uh, a.k.a. Ironton, would have to uh, pay to have Chile extradited. So that's what would have to happen. And obviously, we know with the current political uh, situation, the FBI is not going to get involved, you know, because they're all just about raising revenue from the natives so they can give it to the illegals that they imported into our country illegally. Uh, using nonprofit organizations. So uh, I just don't think that's going to happen. Put it in the comments if you think that Ironton is going to pay to have Chile uh, extradited. One for uh, yes, two for no. Yeah, well, yeah give me a bunch of ones. Felony. Go ahead. Go ahead a misdemeanor or a felony? It, it appears as though he's... Uh, three got, misdemeanors. Yeah, yeah, three <laughs> misdemeanors in Ironton, yeah. Because I think in order to be extradited from state to state, it has to be a felony. But don't quote me, but I assume that that is how it goes. No, it could be for a misdemeanor. They just have to pay a shit ton of money to have him. Yeah, and I, I doubt that. I mean, and if the city pays for someone to be extradited yeah. for misdemeanors, then that's more investigation we need to do. Well, you the thing I mean? is, if they get if they if they pay to get oh, yeah. to Ironton, they're gonna like, have a life hit. Seriously, so like for extraditing people for misdemeanors now. Yeah, yeah. They're either a going after this person. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And you're attacking and being malicious, or you they're gonna know, him. or you're wasting taxpayers' money because yeah. else do you extradite? And I want to know how many other expeditions you've done that are misdemeanors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like how many other people have you done this to? If he's the only one, you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's a lot more questions if it happened. Yeah. So there might be some potential constitutional questions like equal absolutely. protection. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. You know, so, and so Yeah, that makes I don't sense. Think he's going to be extradited. I really don't. I don't believe so either. Yeah. I don't. I tend to agree with you guys. Uh especially uh, because he's so known, a yeah. lot of people Unless they're completely tyrannical, don't want the publicity. They're all know. tyrannical. Well, like his like his stupid That's judge. A, I don't want to be on your YouTube. Well, now you're across everyone's platform, you dumb broad. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. You put yourself across, like, 28 forums, 58 forums or so, you know, with your, your ludicrousy and biasness. I'm surprised you ain't made Fox News yet. Oh, I mean, well, all the codes yeah. for sure. Oh, that's Democrat now, right? Because Disney owns it. That's right. You mean Fox <laughs> News controlled opposition all run by yeah. BlackRock? Yeah, that one. Yeah. You know, this is the real news, guys. Like this channel right here. Oh, this is the real about, news. Yeah. Uh, what happened with my transaction with the officer? Your trans what? I thought you were straight. What? 
Well, I action. mean, whatever. I can oh, sorry, every sorry. minute to every other minute, whatever. <laughs> you know, this minute is uh, tra- no, but uh, the um, Sergeant the, Baby uh, Huey, my uh, my big dough boy. What do you feel about <laughs> um, him and I uh, in our conversation and, and, and why he arrested me? What do you feel as an attorney that I, I mean, I already know what I, I could have calmed down and not been so, you know, Chilly. voiceful. And whatever. <laughs> I'm typically not like that. If you watch any of my other audits, I just had it in me that day, I guess. I had more guts than ever. I mean, I I'm going to be, on, I'm gonna be honest with you. On I'm, I'm not going to give you my opinion as a lawyer, but I'll give you my opinion as, as an American. Okay. And, well, let's do that or whatever. Yeah, give me an yeah, opinion. My, my, my opinion is, is a, is a regular American citizen, um, somebody who supports the bill of rights, a natural law guy. I, I think that the officer should have, I, I don't believe that he had any kind of reasonable articulable suspicion. Number one. And number two, I sure would like to see a copy of whatever contract or law enforcement agreement that L- local LEO has with, with the local post office. What, and should so, have, what should have happened, Mike, is there's that 800 number. If they had yeah. any questions, there's a Leo number that I have. It's a, it's a number right to the postal inspection service yeah. that I've obtained from the post yeah. uh, postal inspection service. And what happens is you call the number and for Leo's or postal employees having an issue, they're supposed to pit the number two prompt, put in the zip code, and it routes them kind of like a 911 to the most yeah. closest postal inspector's office. Now, for somebody like us to make a call, it would be option three. And like I said, I have that number on speed dial. She has that number on speed dial. Everybody who does post office audits should yeah. have it on speed dial. You need to Thanks. have it. I appreciate that. Oh. Thank you. Go ahead, Texas gal. No, no, he's right. You need to have that on speed dial, you know, and the but if you're is, getting, if you're getting shackled, how are you going to dial it? Well, the well whole you thing was, like, numbers. I didn't really, I thought that we were going to have at least another three to five minute conversation, you know, in my, my mind about, okay. And then he's going to say, okay, you know, I don't want to have this conversation. You're going to be trespassed and arrested if yeah. you don't get out of here. And then I would have hightailed it. Like I've done every other time I've heard that. You know what I'm saying? Every other time I've heard the word trespass and arrest, I'm out the door. And then I might like, you know, go harass their cop cars or co harass whatever's in the parking lot, but yeah. I'm not in the building, you know? And then even within the parking lot at one audit, I was still getting harassed and I hightailed it. I said, I ain't talking to the cop, kick yeah. rocks. And I kept going because I knew what they were after. This guy never gave me any opportunity to know that I was actually going to sit in jail for three days. That's crazy. Three so- days for a criminal trespass. And it wasn't because I couldn't bond out. It was because that's how long it took them to process me. Right. Well, that's- okay. So, so, so Texas gal and, and Basil. So we know that the FBI just got busted because it was an inside whistleblower. Uh, for spying on American citizens who believe in the second amendment, legal immigration, yep. the first yep. amendment in particular. And so they just got busted for that. But we know that s- since the last president got elected, there has been a massive movement to arrest people who support the constitution in legal immigration or to paint them as crazy people. And now we know from a whistleblower that that's absolutely what they've been doing. And we know from the Twitter files that the FBI and the CIA have a revolving door employment scheme with the federal government. So they basically are now all the same. They're all instrumentalities of each other. So there really is no, uh, no more United States government. It's basically the, the United States of big tech. And if you're a, a old school FBI or DOJ employee, uh, from what I know, you're, you're basically being constructively terminated because they don't want people like they don't want Christians they don't want Catholics. They don't want people who support the Second Amendment, they especially. They have wanting Catholics since JFK. Just going to say yeah, that they, they do. before yeah, I they, was born. Yeah, the Federal Bureau of Investigation does not want people who support the Constitution. They want people who support whatever their political party says, because we know that once they flood the country with illegal aliens and they redistrict everything with a census, it won't matter anyways. And that's the end game. So I just put it in the comments if you disagree with me, because I think that as a lawyer... I have enough empirical evidence and data to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that's what they're doing. 
Can I they make just a bought a bunch of lemmings. In case I might have to get off this thing, just in case. Uh, yeah. I want to make a shout out for everyone that did tune in today. Uh, if anyone needs any kind of law advice, I say, I say and suggest, or if you have any questions, just throw a few dollars out there so uh, Michael Elon could uh, answer those questions and, and be more prompt to answer those questions for you guys. Because um, a lot of questions come in, but we need to get some of these questions answered. But in order for we us to know which is more urgent, please just throw a couple bucks. One, two dollars for your questions, five dollars, whatever. So we can get some questions answered. For you guys and these aren't like going to be this is just going to be his suggestions these are not going to be actual you know from a, a lawyer da, da, da. these are just what his views are his opinions on a situation these are not law opinions these are you know just his personal opinions for this uh particular thing so if you guys have questions please throw out some dollars throw throw out some money if you guys have some questions so we can get to those questions and get to the bottom line of the answers you know and if we don't know the answers guess what we're all three gonna investigate and all three yeah. of us get down to and, the and by the way i know that texas gal is like being cautious about doing audits and she's out on bond yeah but let's see a bunch of ones in the comments if you want her to go do some more audits with me i got, I got her back i'll take the heat I'll, i i ain't been arrested lately so i'll take one for the team Man, it's still, they're gonna get me. You know it. You know it. <laughs> like I told. They're gonna you, get me for re resisting, talking. obstruction, trespassing, assault and battery. T Mike's gonna have to fly to Texas to defend me. Hey, look, I told you before we did the first audit. I was like, look, I will do everything that you tell me to do, and I will be a good girl, and I will behave. But I have this face that people just just don't and they will continue to make problems with even if i'm not making problems and what did and, and what did i do when they start with well, okay i miss the old lady grabbing i miss the old lady grabbing your press audit. pass they I passed you. him several times they walked past him several times and didn't say a word to him i was in the corner quietly right. and they came out and sought me out so well hey I, tell them real quick tell them about Tell them about the old lady. And I don't know. I'm kind of. Uh, hey, tell them about the old lady grabbing your press badge that you had. Oh, Lord. With her murder glove on. <laughs> 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 like he had a mask and like, like not even just like surgical gloves. These are like murder gloves, gloves. from like murder subway <laughs> wears all loose at the bottom of her wrist and stuff. And she has the nerve to come and attack me. And pop They're me. coming for you now, Texas. Hey. Arr! I'm right here. Bust out that Barrett 50. It's private property, <laughs> motherfucker. You better have a warrant. No, I just. <laughs> Rounds coming down range. Arr! Thank God it was. It's the good guys. It's the firefighters. Come on, murder, murder glove lady. Come on, finish that story real quick. Oh, yeah. So she looks at me. She's questioning me. And she's like, what does this press pass say? Now, my press pass is kind of funny. It's something from the anchor man. And I'm Helen, the hairdresser from Anchorman. And that's what my uh, press pass says. <laughs> and she's like, this says hairdresser. This says hairdresser. And she's freaking out. And I have to like snatch it back from her and tuck it into myself. I was like, I like to keep my persons and papers and effects to myself, lady. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. So you had to tuck stuff in? Yeah, I had to tuck it back to like where my little fanny pack was. That kind of reminds me of that uh, movie Friday. I'm tucking my shit in. Oh, she we lost her, man. Could be oh single. Gosh, she might have had that phone call. That's fine. So, look, we're already over an hour. So, everybody, I want you to understand something. I, I think I see her coming back. Everybody, Am I, I want here? you to understand. Oh, what it, happened? I think my... Not, so well, so stay stay on the live. We want to see if you go I away and torture up for a second. We lost you for a minute. Anyhow. Yeah, so murder gloves lady grabs my stuff and she literally is like touching. She's looking at it it's like it's supposed to be a joke. She's like, says hairdresser and all of this stuff. And then I snatch it back from her and I tuck it back into my um, fanny pack. And I was like, I like to keep my persons and papers and effects to myself. Hoorah. She continues to ask if I have a website. And I said, I do. And she was like, well, what is it? And I was like, well. I, I really don't want to disseminate that to you. Well, at the moment. She's like, so well, you can take my picture 
and you can do all this without my permission. And then goes and <laughs> tells me that the Americans with Disabilities Act is going to come after me. <laughs> all right. All right. So guys, really quick, because it's getting, it's getting over my time. Like, so let me just explain what's going on here. So I, I do personal injury law. I do car accidents and cruise ship claims, you know, airplane crashes or like where a piece of luggage falls out of the overhead and gives you a brain injury. That's the kind of stuff that I do. I used to do a lot of appellate work and criminal defense, but I sort of moved into this. And so my wife, I, I work for her and our kids. That's what I, that's my job. That's what a real man does. When you get married, your job is to support your wife and her children. And so she's allotted me to be able to do an hour to be able to do this. She helps me with the firm. Like she's legit. Like she keeps, keeps the kitchen squared away. She's from El Salvador, old school, right? Kitchen squared away, helps me with uh, gunner with judo, helps me with my daughter, with the feminine stuff. Um, and my job is to make sure the money comes in so she can help me with other stuff that the government wants to control them with. Right. The government does not can want a man. In the home. You can't hear anything. I can't hear you. Okay. So can you hear me I BZ? Hear I can hear you fine. Okay. Copy that. I was just going to mine some stuff to her. All right. So just really quick, I just want to let you guys all understand. So she's given me this, this time and I, you know, I have an hour and then anything over that, I get my, my ass ripped. Right. And, uh, yeah, I know I'm strong and big and all that, and I can handle myself, but you know, you never lay your hand on a woman. And when, and when the mother of uh, your children starts chewing you out, that's like getting punched in the face by a, like a, a heavyweight UFC fighter for a guy who lives his whole life to make sure his family's taken care of. So I just want you guys to know, like anything over an hour, it's a real problem for me, but I have given you a solid hour of my time. And if you have additional questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to me. Uh, um, just try to be courteous, considerate, and kind. Like my old uh, uh, Pastor Fagerstrom said, I used to go to a uh, Christian private school, and he always said, at Calvary Christian School, we must be courteous, considerate, and kind to others. And I, and I really do believe that. You should be that way. Uh, always be kind and courteous and considerate. But if someone lights you up, you have my permission to light them back up. Um, so BZ Watchdog and uh, Texas Gal, I, I don't see her anymore. So I'm assuming she's her, out her, of her phone's tripping. She just sent me a text that her phone. Copy that. Copy that. On, but, it, it's um, pretty much over though, guy. Yeah, so yeah, I got you. just tell me like, if anybody has any like major questions or concerns, put them in there. If not, so, so I don't think we have anything scheduled for tomorrow. So I need, uh, I'm working if, on some stuff. I'm working on some okay. stuff, but, um, anybody, so everybody, if, if anybody's got any kind of auditors, any kind of footage that needs taken, uh, that wants some dissection going on, Reach out to me. You can um, email me. Um, it's it's uh, bzwatchdog at gmail.com. Or if you're on my channel, I, I think it's bzwatchdog at gmail.com as well. Um, or you can reach out to Let's OTBO. Um, he's got my email and contact info as well. Um, I'm trying to get Know Your Rights OTBO, but he's not answering. Um, I've reached out to a bunch of auditors. I'm just waiting for responses. Um, I, I am going to get off this live and contact NorCal cop watch. Um, he had another arrest, Mike, that was, he got arrested again yesterday. So, um, he, there's certain things he can't talk, but, um, there is some things he can't talk about. So I'd like to get him on cause everybody's trying to get him on right now. Um, everybody don't forget to go to my channel, BZ watchdog. Um, don't forget about Texas gal audits. Make sure you like and subscribe with our channels. Um, like I said, we do have um, a lot of us that are out there nonstop, full-time jobs. Anything can help us, donations, super chats, um, anything like that will help. You don't, it ain't got to put up much. Like like uh, Texas Gal said, a dollar here, a dollar there. It just keeps us um, – it just keeps us doing what we're doing, man, because I work, I work a full-time job seven days a week, and I'm out there filming as well um, and doing other stuff. So I, I – I'm – dude, ask Mike. I'm helping him with – these slides, these videos, I'm probably getting 100. five and a half hours of sleep a night, guys. One hundred. So anything you can help, anything you can help out. Um, I, if you really want to help out, just go through like I've been doing and roll through all my videos and let them play overnight. Get those watch hours for them. That would actually really help me out. Um, if you if you can't if you can't donate any funds or whatever, that's fine. Help me out with the watch hours. That's what I'd rather have you do is the watch hours. All right. Um, and then, that being said, um. I, I don't know what else you got, Mike, other than free chili to Castro. 
Yeah. So really quick, I'm going to close this out. So everybody understands something. I, I get a lot, like I've seen a couple of uh, the frauditors say, oh, oh, you never did live chats until uh, Chile uh, got locked up and you're just doing this because you're trying to make money. Let me tell you something. I can make millions of dollars off of one big car accident or bus accident case. So I'm not trying to like make money per se, you know, doing that. Uh, I was in the process of, of uh, tutoring Chile to get him on the California law office study program so we could get him his law license. Because I really feel like Chile just never had a mentor or anyone who could really teach him uh, the other part of law, which is civility and things like that. And so what I was hoping to do, because the guy's freaking genius, I, I, I was trying to find a way to help him become a lawyer because I, he kind of reminds me of me uh, when I was fighting traffic tickets back in the day and I didn't have any uh, mentor or leadership uh, to sort of help me uh, get through this. I just, oh, well, Marbury versus Madison says all laws repugnant to the Constitution are null and void. Therefore, everything you're doing is null and void as I get locked up and get thrown in jail. That's not the way you do it. So I, I want everybody to understand if you want to know the law, you have to learn it and you have to mean to keep it well. And you need to have mentors, you need to have tutelage, you need to have people in your life like me, people who are better than me to sort of help you understand it. Because you're never going to win a, a case uh, in front of a jury if a jury sees your cussing and swearing at the cops or whatnot. Uh, there's the 10 degrees or six degrees of separation, whatever you want to call it, where most of those jurors are going to have a friend or a family member who's a cop or a fireman or works for the government. So what you want to do is you want to convince people uh, by, by not winning over them, but by winning them over. So there's a difference. And, and, and what I want to do is, is teach you how to do that because I care about you and I don't want you to get locked up because I've been locked up and it's the worst experience you could ever go through. So with that being said, uh, with uh, Miss uh, Constitutional Law Gal or Texas Law Gal, Miss Constitutional Rights. Tex Texas Gal Audits and Miss Constitutional Rights. Let's get it straight. Well, you know, but it's the same deal. Like you're all in the same bucket of of horridity at this point, because we know now, based upon uh, the Supreme Court case where they denied cert, and based upon the illegal government surveillance uh, that it, it, that has been conducted on us, that you are definitely being targeted. So you need to be on your best behavior. Because ultimately, it's the jury who's going to decide your case. And if they think you're a crazy person or a nut job, they're not going to rule in your favor. They, they might they might find in your favor and say, we find the police liable and give you a dollar. Well, that's not going to help you and your family when you've been locked up for six months or a year and you've lost $100,000 in income and everything else that you've lost. You couldn't pay your utility bill, right? You might even get evicted during that time. So I, while illegals just keep flooding into our country and get everything for free and they murder and rape our children and they don't even go to prison or jail. So think about that. And that's what I'm concerned with. Being American, being a Marine, that really bothers me. And I want you guys to really start thinking like you better start thinking because you guys right now we have 22 million illegals. Say goodbye to your Second Amendment once they redistrict unless we can deport these people now. Uh, it, unless anybody else has any questions, I'm going to look here. I'm sure that Big Brother is watching this. Let me tell you something, dude. Roger, Big Brother's been watching me since I was born, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to be like a William Wallace for my children, so they know that come hell or high water, their dad was a patriot and a fighter, and he'll never give up when it comes to defending them and the freedoms of their fellow Americans. So, uh, okay, so hold on a second. Michael Eli, what's contact info? Let's get, so age go. Everybody who wants to get a hold of me, reach out to my brother, Marine, at BZ Watchdog, uh, so he can go ahead. He's helping me out with some law clerking and stuff in Texas. If you get in a car accident or whatever, truck accident, whatever, you call him, and then he'll reach out to me. If you have other issues, call him, reach out to me. Make sure to add her and him to your channels. And thanks again for uh, Let's OTVO helping me mod this because I'm getting a lot of crap. That being said, okay, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to save because we never know when the thought police are going to take down this channel. And they, they will take down this channel because they do not want people out there talking about the Bill of Rights, Constitution, Denons, 
Articles of Confederation. They don't want people talking about that. They want mindless drones who are going to just go along with the program. We don't want that. We want our kids to be independent, free thinkers. By the way, I did a video about uh, the Rockefeller takeover of our education system uh, yesterday. Take a look at it. It'll really help educate you. Part two, I'm going to try to get finished up tonight. Other than that, I got nothing else to say other than Semper Fidelis, do or die, and we are out.